As you can see, this is what we left off from the previous video. We just added these tiles by hand using these prefabs. In this video, we are going to make a C-sharp script that is going to be responsible for spawning these tiles infinitely. And here you can see how the tiles will be generated in the scene view. So let's delete these tiles and let's create an empty game object and let's rename it to tile manager then let's create a c-sharp script under scripts let's create c-sharp script and let's call this tile manager as well now drag and drop this script into this tile manager empty game object double click it to open it up on visual studio First, we need the reference for our tiles that we created in the previous episode. Under here, let's create public and it's going to be an array of game objects. And let's call this tile prefabs. Then let's save this. And when we go back into Unity, Select the tile manager. We have here this new variable and you can specify the size of your prefabs. So we have six prefabs. Then under prefabs, let's drag and drop the first one, then the second and all of these tiles as well. Let's go back to the script. But before we spawn a tile, we need to know where we are going to spawn it. So we need another field and it's going to be public and float. And let's call this Z spawn. And it's going to be initialized to zero by default. And this is going to be the Z position of the spawned tile because the X and the Y are not going to change. So we are moving along the Z axis. That's why we created the Z spawn variable. Then we need also to know the length of our tile. So let's make public float and let's call this tile length. In our case, the length of our tile is 30. Now let's create the method that is going to instantiate uh, the tile. So under the update method, let's create a new method, a public void, and let's call it spawn tile. And it's going to take the index of the tile that we need to spawn it. Int, and let's call this tile index. Now to instantiate a new tile, we are going to use the instantiate method. We are going to instantiate a tile from the array, which we call it tile prefabs. And we are going to instantiate the tile at the index tile index. For the position, we are going to use the z-spawn. And we are going to spawn it to uh, the transform dot forward multiplied by the z-spawn and for the rotation let's use the transform to the rotation but we need also to add the tile length to the z-spawn so the next tile will be spawned next to the other using z-spawn plus equals the tile length now to test if this method is working Let's call it under the start method. Let's call it three times. And let's spawn uh, the first tile. Then we're gonna spawn the second one in the array. And let's choose the fourth one also. Now let's save this. Go back into Unity. Hit this run button. We need to see three new tiles generated automatically 
by this script and that's it you see here we have the default one with no obstacle and uh, the two other tiles Now let's go back to the script. Now instead of copying and pasting this method over and over again, let's use for loop. But before this, let's create a new variable and let's make it public. And it's going to be the number of tiles that we wanted to see on the screen. And it's going to be an int and let's call it number of tiles. And let's choose a value by default 5, for example. And here, in the start method, we are going to use a for loop using for int i equals 0, i less than the tile prefab's length, or the number of tiles, sorry, i plus plus. And let's call the spawn tile method. And let's use a random tile using random dot range. And it's going to be a number between zero and the tile prefabs length minus one using tile prefabs dot length. Now we will see five tiles generated randomly on the screen when the game starts. So let's save this and go back into Unity, hit the run button. You see now that we have uh, five tiles generated randomly, as you can see them right now. But you see that the player collides with this box collider. That's why we need to make sure that the first tile is the default one with no obstacles. To do that, let's go back over here and we are going to check if i equals 0 in this case we are going to spawn the default tile which is the first one otherwise we are going to choose a random tile now let's save this and go back into unity hit the run button again you see now we have five tiles and the first one is uh, empty But we need to generate tiles infinitely, so the idea is that when the player is moving forward, we are going to spawn new tiles. So let's go back to the C# script. First we are going to declare a new variable, and it's going to be our player, so public, transform, we need just the transform of our player, and let's call this player transform, and over here in the update method, we are going to check if the player transform dot position dot z is greater than the z spawn minus the number of tiles multiplied by the tile length. In this case, we are going to spawn a new tile. And the same thing, it's going to be random. So let's copy and paste this over here. Now let's go back into Unity. So select the tile manager, then drag and drop this player over here. Hit the run button. You see now. that new tiles are generated while the player is moving forward. You can change the speed of the player. So let's select it. And over here, let's change the speed to biggest number to see the difference. You see that now we have an endless game. New tiles are generated when the player is moving forward.
But the only problem with this is that we are adding tiles infinitely without deleting them. And this is going to slow down the computer. So we need to delete the tiles that we've passed. And to do that, we need to create a new list of active tiles. And then we are going to remove the tiles that are behind the player. So under here, let's create a new variable and let's make it private. And it's going to be a list of game objects. But uh, you need to uh, use the system collections generic to use the lists. So let's create a list of game object and let's call it active tiles and let's put it to a new list of game objects using a new list of game object now under here when we spawn a new tile we need to add it to the active tiles list so let's make uh, a game object that is going to reference the tile that uh, we are spawning using game object and let's call it go and it's going to be uh, the instantiated tile and then we are going to add it to the list using active tiles dot add and we are going to add this game object Now, when we spawn a new tile in the update method over here, we need to delete the first one in the active tiles list using a new method and let's call this method delete tile. Now let's declare it over here and let's make it private void and it's called delete tile and to delete a tile we are going to delete the first one in the active tiles list using delete or destroy and we are going to destroy the active tile at the index 0 and we need also to remove it from the list using remove at so active tiles dot remove at And we are going to remove the first tile in the list. Now let's save this. And uh, let's go back into Unity. Hit this run button. Now you see that uh, when we spawn a new tile, we are deleting the first one over here. But the only problem is that the player falls down. And that's because we need to add a save zone. So to fix that uh, in the update method, so we need to change this if the player transform the position dot z minus thirty five. So as a save zone, if that is greater than the z spawn minus the number of tiles multiplied by the tile length, in this case we are going to spawn a tile and delete another. So let's save and uh, go back into Unity. Now it's working very well. And you see here in the scene view that the script is working very well. So when we spawn a new tile, we are deleting uh, the other behind the player. And this is how to create an endless game. You see that we have just three tiles, so I changed the number of tiles to three. Now, if you have any question about this script, you can write it down in the comments section below. You can also just copy and paste this script and it's going to work. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Now we have a cool game, so it's an endless runner game, as you can see we have the player moving and new tiles are generated automatically, we didn't check for collision yet, we are going to do that in the next video, and uh, have a great day!